right. That, now that's a vibe. That is an easy Saturday morning vibe if I ever heard one. We are chillaxing, max relaxing, just feeling all right. How we doing out there, gang? How's it going out there in the YouTube's land? Chick, chickity, chick. Oh, coming in all caps. Alakazam, Alakabam. Andrew Light. Oh, my man. It was good to see you in the Zoom hang. And I know those can roll on kind of long, so never worry if you, if you have to bounce. We were glad to see you, though. Oh, my gosh, yeah, today. I'm backstage right now. I'm, I'm behind the curtain right now. Still setting up. I just added your name to the wheel, the random spinning chaos wheel. Nice. Enchiladas in the oven. Literally, I assume. Not metaphorically. But, you know, we all got some enchiladas in the oven. Some irons in the fire. Some enchiladas in the oven. Scribe it in. This little jam track that I made reminds me very much of um, J.J. Kale's song, Magnolia. Beautiful song. Tim Taylor, howdy. Oh, Tim Taylor. You know, I was drinking out of the Alaska mug this morning. Just so you know. I'm still backstage right now, so I know, I, I know that you can't see me yet. I'll see you Making sure I got Tim Taylor's name in the wheel. I got Andrew Light's name in the wheel. Okay, we've got... Uh-huh, Bernie, Ricky, Daniel. Daniel's in there, okay. Uh, oh, we gotta add Jennifer. Jennifer Dare to share. Love it. Okay. Ooh, we gotta add Brett. We got Brett in there. Brett's there. Adam. Do we have Adam? We got Adam. We got Ken. Ooh, we gotta add Sonny. Sonny. What you doing with a dude like me? scooby doo ba do and do you do? Do 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 do. Hey, John Borger, how you doing? There is a stage. There's a stage in life when you feel ready to spin the wheel of chaos, and we're almost there. Ta da 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 da. That's the wheel. We're not gonna do it quite yet. Well, look at it. Isn't it beautiful? I'm just gandering at it. Looks like we got a lot of names in there. Cagebot's even in there. I wonder what we should do if Cagebot lands on it. Hey, Wade Olson. Hey, Jeffrey Quest. How are we? Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, yeah, I've got to switch the iPad over. I was like, why is there no magical frets? Because it was on the other thing. Oh, gang. What's good? What's good in the neighborhood? In fact, for what it's worth, for the, for the kids... For the wild ones who are on YouTube Shorts, I'm gonna now attempt to hit go live on vertical as well. Cause you gotta be everywhere all the time, all at once these days, otherwise you don't exist. Just kidding, this is kombucha by the way, and just a really classy tumbler. Mmm, it's got good grip on it. This is my uh, iced coffee, cold brew, with a bit of Laird Hamilton's uh, you know, everybody's got to soup up their brain these days, so it's got some performance mushrooms in there. Not a sponsor, yet. Laird Hamilton is that uh, big wave surfer who now still big wave surfs, but he's selling mushrooms, and also he's for years been doing the like Aquaman training where he's like at the bottom of a deep dive pool holding like 20 pound weights so that it keeps him on the bottom of the pool walking just like this. Michael! Oh, yeah. Yeah, the action grip, exactly. Throw me a kombucha, bam! Perfect catch every time. 
Um, this lazy, lovely loop. Can any t anybody tell me what key it's in? I made it yesterday. I can't remember what key it's in. Any guesses? If you're on your side of, of the camera, hopefully, of the screen with a guitar, I would hope you're sitting there primed and ready. Let's jam over this thing. For my members that were with, with me yesterday on the Friday Zoom hang, we're gonna brush up on this and really try to like solidify our knowledge and our awareness of where these chord tones are over some of the most classic and beautiful changes that there are using the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord in various different orders, which is like just fun. Just frankly, gosh dog it, that's just science. It's a fun time. Just simple, easy breezy, lovely stuff like that. That's where we're headed. We've got ourselves a C major. John, nicely played. Wade, nicely played. We got the major part. So we're just gonna get into it. And it's gonna be great. And I'm so glad you're here. So let me hit go live on the vertical stream. If it crashes everything, I'll come right back. Like literally, if I freeze mid word, then you'll know. I mean, the music's still going, so you can tell. Sorry, I was, didn't mean to play with your feelings there. I'm just checking to see if it's going live there. And then we'll get into it. What's the weather like where you are? What's the color of the guitar you're holding right now? What's the name of the guitar you're holding right now? Do you have a name for your guitar? I have yet to name this one. It's kind of affectionately been called like Blue's Clues, I guess, because that's sometimes what people refer to my YouTube video style as. This is like Blue's Clues, but for a guitar. Yeah, yeah, because you've got to find the clues. It appears that we're going live also vertically. I don't know why, but somebody said that YouTube just made it as sort of like a new priority, trying to keep up with the... I don't want to say the name of their competitor because maybe the algorithm will hear me. The algorithm always hears you, Timothy. Minus 37. Folks, not a typo. That's our friend. Tim Taylor lives on the North Pole. Fender Strat, nice, John. Hey, I like this sort of, this is the MIDI guitar. This does the dots on the. But it's obviously a Strat style, S style. But what I like is that it has this humbucker down here, which is what I'm using now. I've never had a guitar, frankly never had a guitar that had a, a humbucker, basically. Sea foam green, I love that color. Like this is more the, the, the baby blue, but a Strat, sea foam green, there's something about it. It just feels sort of California and surfy and vibey and cool. Sort of like what we're uh, noodling over right here. So, for those just joining us, my name's Tim Fagan, guitar friend Tim. Happy to have you, happy Saturday. We're gonna talk about playing chord tones, chord changes with the most elemental chords and notes that we'll ever have. So that last progression that we were playing, let's go over to Kapow, guess what? That right there says GWAD, that stands, uh, stands for Guitar Workout of the Day. We left out the T, because that would just get too clunky. So we have now hit, as of today, GWAD 90. We're fastly approaching Workout 100, and I'm thinking about making some special merch, like Workout 1, W-O-N, because we've all been working hard to get this far, and if you're just joining us, you're coming in at a good time. You're getting in at a good time, getting into the ground floor. Um, let's talk about, like, real quick, we get pretty unexcited about the major scale. And I don't blame us because it is often like not the bee's knees. We, we sort of get, let me know with an emoji, show, show the expression you have about the major scale. Because maybe you were um, force fed the major scale, like in the early days of playing guitar, like, here's a C chord, okay. 
you know, great. Here's a here's an E chord. Okay, now you got to learn the major scale. Like it kind of gets in there and it feels a little bit like, eh, it's all right. Um, but what I want us to try to do today is give it another shot. And we're going to approach it by using what we already know and love, which is the pentatonic scale. So let's look at the key of C right here. And we'll spell out the alphabet, you know, the C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And then it just repeats. So those right there are the notes of the C major scale. We don't have any sharps or flats. And if we were to number them very simply, they just go in an order that follows the way that numbers do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great. So if we were to play a major scale, those are the notes that we're choosing from. Sure, there are other notes, but for C major, that's that. If we were to grab the five notes that comes from a pentatonic. So like we're, I assume we're all familiar with the sound of a pentatonic, even just the phrase like, oh, a pentatonic scale. We, we sort of light up with a sense of like, okay, I think, I think I know what we're talking about. In this case, let's take the classic, and I mean classic. This is the box one shape, and this is the one that looks like A minor. And just for the sake of conversation, can anybody tell me why does A minor, minor pentatonic match exactly C major pentatonic? Why? Like, what's, what's the, the key word there that makes them share the exact same notes in common? There's a very important word, relative minor. That's right, they're, they're relative major and minor. So A minor is the relative minor. So if, if we were to play it as an A minor, that's that A minor box one. If we were to play this as a C major, that's why I circled the C notes in white. So the same notes played a different way, emphasize a different way, sounds like major in this case. So think of that, remember that. And now this might be something where you know it, but you have never really lined it up with these letters and numbers. The five notes that we're using in a C major pentatonic are C, D, E. We leave out the F with G. We go A, and we leave out the B. So we're playing the one, two, three, leave out the four, the five, and the six. Today, just as sort of a, a jump ahead kind of spoiler alert, I want us to bring in those other notes, but rather than thinking like, all right, we got the whole C major scale, which like we've said before, can be a little bit overwhelming or a little bit dry. And kind of, it can kind of sound like, well, which, where do I put these notes? They're just kind of all on the table. But instead, if we treat it like we've got this skeleton of like, yes, I know the C major pentatonic. I like it. I can sort of find it and find my way around it. What if then, depending on what chord was happening, this is where we're going to get to the chord changes, on certain chords, could I bring in, um, I'm trying to pick my colors wisely here, but let's say on a certain chord, we bring in the B. And on another certain chord, we bring in the F. So we're putting those notes back in. And when we put them in with the idea of like, oh, here comes that chord where I really want to use, try to use the F or try to use the B. It's just fun. And then we'll, we'll hear the difference immediately. Um, so that's the idea. And the other thing I want to show you here is that if we were to take you know, in this in this uh, first jam, this first chord progression, it goes F, so it starts on the four chord of C, and then it resolves to the one chord. So an F chord, again, looking at our, our string of the C major notes here, just as a quick review, can anybody tell me the three notes that make a C major triad? So the triad, the one, three, and the five, you hear about the lot, we, we learn triads, we're working on them, right? We're doing like, okay, Here's a C, here's a C, there's a C, there's a C. And those triads are really cool. And the, the internet is all abuzz with them. And one of the things that we all get taught is like, okay, a triad is one, three, and five. One major third in this case, because it's a major triad. Very correct, Mr. Tim Taylor. 
school teacher guitar friend Tim. Oh my gosh, we got the chalkboard out. So that's C, E, and G. That's one, three, and five. So we're skipping the notes in between. And that's important because that's a really good, easy way to sort of like see in front of you the notes that make up a triad. You just use that same game. So if we were to take F, for example, the four chord F, the three notes that would make up an F, we can use this same recipe. So let's imagine you're in a different key that's like E flat or something and you're, and you're less familiar. If you were to write out the notes of the scale, and you can look it up on the interwebs to find what are the seven notes that make up this particular major scale. You could lay it out in front of you and then be like, okay. So then on the four chord, if I go to the four, obviously it's gonna have the four in it, and then it's gonna skip, and then we're gonna skip over the B and land on the C. So an F chord uses an F, an A, and a C. And I'm just seeing now on the vertical format, you can't see it on the horizontal, but on the vertical version of the stream, the F and the A and the, a and the C are right on my face. Yeah, F-A-C on the F-A-C-E. All right, we'll put it over here then. Okay, so now looking over here, shroom, 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 Let's find what note don't we have? Well, okay, from the pentatonic, those pink notes that we've already circled from the pentatonic, we've got a couple of those already. We've got the C, we've got the, the A, we don't have the F. So that's why, ah, if we bring in this F right here, we can bring it in right there as well, just in that one position. Those, those are two places where that F appears. And that's like pretty rock and roll handy dandy. I'm just gonna erase it because I, can go back and sort of clean that up a bit. Um, right, so let's just try messing with that. We're gonna jump into this jam track again, and it starts on an F chord. So I want you to just, for right now, even if you know more positions and more notes, and this is sort of review for you, humor me and let's play this game where when we're on the F chord, we're just gonna hang out, and we're not gonna play any more than just that one note, play a four, play that F. And then the moment, and you can play it down here as well. So it's like it's a little bit like musical chairs. Once we hit that F chord, hang out on the F, and then when it goes to the C, uh, noodle, just flat out, just move around. So it starts on an F. Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. And now we got C. Back up to a F, noodle, F. And now it goes to a G. We'll talk about the G in a second. Here comes an F. C. Maybe resolve it out of the F. So we go F. Now play a little lick that gets us out of there. Do we dig that? Let me know. Is that making any sense for you? Is it is it clicking? Do you have any questions? You can always ask. I might sometimes have to jump back and forth and, and, and catch up with the chat. But I feel like we're locking in. We're looking at the stuffs. We're feeling the things. Um, so those green notes there on the chart represent where the F notes are. And yeah, it, what I like is that we start with sort of like a deliberate like assignment to be like, okay, when we're on F, I just got to hit an F note and maybe there'll be more ways to explore it as soon as you get that under your fingers. But it's a really good way to, to start to connect your soloing and your, and your noodling and jamming with like a, an added awareness of here comes that chord where it's an opportunity. If I really want to line up with that chord and match the changes, I can, I don't have to. And we all know the, the sort of happy accident, fun feeling of like, I'm just going along and sometimes it really locks in and, and, I really enjoy kind of that exploration trial and error. Um, but it, it is also good to be able to see like an underlying map, almost like see these dots kind of in, in your mind to be able to be like, all right, I'm going to go for it and really hit the four on the four. More options, more flavor, more control. That's the idea. So if I were to, you know, just to remind you, if we were to spell out the entire F chord, We've got this C shape here, but there's that triad. So you might be like, oh yeah, oh wow. You know, there it is. I kind of, 
you know, I'll make it real deliberate here and then I'll erase it. But like, if this is the, the F chord in there, that might be something that was there all along. It was. And you might be like, oh, of course. Like, so, so I want you to be gluing together some of the work you've already put in to maybe learn how to play that F right there and how to play, you know, nobody plays that C, by the way. <laughs> if anyone tries to show you that in a YouTube tutorial, run! Nobody plays that. They might play this, they might play this. All the time they might play that, but nobody's doing that without a capo or without um, a lobotomy. I don't know. All right, so that kind of just explains whoa, um, how and why we're approaching it this way. We're just adding, we're adding back into the regular pentatonic the, the fourth degree, which is what we just added. And now we're going to add the fifth degree. So you may be hearing in that moment where it goes to the G chord, just to be just to give us an overview of what these chord changes are. Um, they go, so I'll draw this in white. So they go F to C. And it does that three times. So I'll just, I'll shorthand, I'll write that F to C three times, and then it goes to a G. And then it just kind of hangs out on the G for like a one, two, like for a good long time. So over that G, we've got a lot of time to play something different. Can you guess what note is going to come into play on that G that we haven't touched on yet? So just like the F, it's going to, you know, there's going to be two of the three notes in the G triad are already built in to our C major pentatonic. But we need that money note, that colorful, extra different, exotic, forbidden fruit that is the seventh degree, the B. And this comes from G. B and D eh? being the notes that make up that G triad. We do that same game. We did G, we skipped over A to get to B, and then we skipped over C to get to D. You get the idea. This awesome, crazy mustard. You know, I was just envious of those football commentators that can scribble on the screen and being like, I can do that. So then I got fancy with my iPad, and here we are. So it's G, B, and D. I'm just going to write G, B, and D. Like those are the notes of the G triad, and we're going to be hitting that B note, and that occurs right here, and it occurs right here, and I want us to reach back and be able to grab that one right there. Okay, let's clean that up. A little bit crazy. So when you go back for that, that one that's back there, I want you to be able to just, just go back. So look at my left hand on the camera be able to just reach back for that with your index finger and then come right back into position. So that you have your comfortable anchor here where you can, you can see that shape in the C major pentatonic. And then when you go back for that, just go there. Cause if you were to use like a, one of your other fingers, you might suddenly kind of lose your footing to be able to, your fingering to get back up and find your way in. So um, does that make sense? Let's try it. I know I got fancy, John. Uh, and I got the dancing dots. This is all coming out of Christmas. I was like, you know, huh, when I come back this year, I'm going to get those dancing dots on the screen. I'm going to get me the iPad. Let's play. So same type of thing. Try to emphasize, emphasize that F. And then C. F again. Here comes the G. Go for a yellow note. By all means, you can emphasize other chord tones that occur right there within the pink notes. So you can play an F triad. So that triad has that seventh right there. You get the idea.
know, it's good to just breathe and noodle a bit. Let the noodles flow, I say. Set them free. How we feeling? Sorry to ask for the emoji interaction. I don't know if that's if we feel too old for that shit, but it, what what emoji speaks to your heart right now that represents how you're feeling about this? If you got one that you're seeing there, if you if you don't even know what an emoji is, God bless you. Who cares anyway? But um, but yeah, let me know. Is is this kind of making sense? Because this is coming out of what I was working on this week with my members. If you're not a member, we do this um, every weekday. Knock on wood, we're able to keep it up, but. So far, so good. I really look forward to um, streaming every night. So every night, Nashville time, 7 p.m., I go live for sometimes 15 minutes, sometimes closer to a half hour. And it's just like this. It's an it's an unlisted YouTube stream, so it's not public. And my members hop in there, and they play with me. And then they let me know what they're working through and what questions they have. And this week, we were working on what I call buddy notes. And buddy notes was just sort of a, a phrase, random phrase I came up with to describe, like, kind of what we're doing, where you get to know the flavor of a scale degree and, and what notes are around it. So the basic start of it was, let's say we, we go from scratch here again. We've got like, let's say a C, just a regular C note right there, you know. And any particular, you know, note that you choose as your root, it's good to understand, like if you were to go a couple notes above it and a couple notes below it, like what that sounds like, what that feels like, and more importantly, just how to find it. Because sometimes it's it's so simple, we're not able to do it, which is the weird thing about guitar. It's like, it's so obvious, it's right there, but I can't find it when the song starts or when the moment, when the moment arrives. You get one shot to play that pentatonic, mom spaghetti. Um, what I'm drawing here is just the fun and slightly crazy thing about guitar which we all know, which is that the same note appears everywhere, sometimes in the same octave, sometimes in a different octave. But all of those are C notes, and all I've drawn there is C, D, E in all those different spots. And to be able to understand where the one, two, three is, I guess I did D, I don't know. Or would it, no, I went to the, but there it is. So those buddy notes, it was just a way of being like, all right, if I can find my root, then I can find the like the buddy note above, the buddy note below, and finding that seven is right there below it, built around the major scale. Um, so we we start to connect more awareness to like, yes, when you're shown a scale, these notes sometimes come across as being like, these are the notes you can play without hitting any wrong notes. But I want you to have more control to be like, oh no, I really like how a how a two sounds like the, I like that you know, that resolve, that resolution there. I like knowing that I can go down to the seven on a five chord. I can do a cool little bend there. Those are part of your vocabulary. Coffee. Oh, Nick, how we doing? Michael, how we doing? Michael, Michael Beckloff, one of our new members. Thanks for jumping in on the, um, on the stream and being here with us. Sonny Pleasantone, by the way, if you are a member and you did dare to share, we do a monthly dare to share challenge. February, obviously, has just wrapped up. Not long from now, we're going to be doing the random winner drawing with the Wheel of Chaos to let, you know, chaos decide who is the winner of a free lesson with me. Oh, my gosh. I woke up with a little bit of a, a little bit of a thing. My throat feels good now, but it's just slightly more sultry than usual. Um, anyway, let's see. I know, major isn't even the happiest sounding mode either. Yeah, we could. I think we're talking Lydian, right? Lydian is the most optimistic and just sort of like, I always consider it the looking out a window on a train while you're traveling to see your beloved in a romantic comedy. It's that sound, it's that. Or like going to a fancy gift, a gift shop and, you know, Notting Hill on Portobello Road in England uh, to find a lovely scoff for your sweetie. <laughs> Oh yeah, you'll you'll dare again next month. I just feel it, Nick. It's okay. It's optional. Wade's gonna do it too. I can just feel it. But you never know when the when the mood will strike you to rock out. Here's a new feel. So guess what? My philosophy on guitar is learn a bite of new information. And then before you go for another bite. Use that first bite repeatedly. Use it in different keys. If we had just stayed in the key of C all day, that'd be okay, but we might be developing a blind spot. So 
Let's go to the wild and crazy key of G, which is where we are. Shaba da ba doing doing. Scooby dooby dooby doo. And let's repeat. Let's rinse and repeat. Jam over this. Find your way through. And we're just doing major today. We're just doing combinations of one, four, and five chords. So we're going to take a G. G. A. B. C. D. E. F. Sharp. Spicy. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Those are our notes for the key of G major. What's kind of fun about this one when it comes to the, uh, the pentatonic is that you can play it up on the 12th fret or down here in open. I'm going to draw it on open because it fits on my fretboard diagram here the best. These are open strings. You may know this. You may know me by... I'm Troy McClure. So it looks like an E minor pentatonic, slash, slash, G major. Okay. Circling the roots. Pentatonic grabs this one. One, two, three, skip the four. Five, six, skip the seven. But not today, my guitar friends. We're gonna bring in the four and the seven. So this chord progression, G goes to a D, goes to a C, back to G. One, five, four, one. That's your chord progression right there, right? So let's play this kind of musical chairs game. Can anybody tell me? I mean, I guess I've got the notes right there. On the C chord for today, just for today, we're really gonna try to emphasize that note right there. Yeah, bada boom, yeah, bada bing. Boom, and on the D chord, we're gonna really and fa size. And we can't reach back for that low seven down there because we're already on an open string. There you go. So here's the game that I want you to try to play. Um, we'll just stop this for a second and we'll slow it down a bit. I want you to try to play steady. It'll be like boo da da. Like if you can, just be playing, you know, the G major pentatonic, like da 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 da, and see if you can fluidly find your way to that to that chord tone where you're just going to hang on it. But the trick is, can you just sort of get there as close as possible without having to jump? Meaning it'd be like da 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 da, like as smoothly as possible. And then da da do da boo ba, and then you're just off to the races again. So when we're, whenever we're on G in the first chord and the fourth chord, just sort of go for it. But see if you can just sort of play your way right up to or as close as possible to one of those one of those green or um, green or yellow notes, you know, as needed. Here we go. Starting on a G, and I'll turn it down tempo wise. This will feel like molasses compared to where we were. But here we go. No, it won't, because I didn't do it. I didn't even do it. I'm such a dummy, and I'm sorry. Oh, boy. Okay, we're going down from 87 to 75. I can't drive 75. Here we go. There's the four chord. G. G again. Five chord. Four chord.
So if you're a more advanced player right now and you're like, I get it, I got it, coach, give me more to do, I want you to introduce chromaticism. See if you can play this game we're doing, but layer in some connecting pieces that are smooth as silk and chromatic. feeling gang talk to me questions comments concerns is there anything i can do to make life easier for you oh i don't know oh that's my dog that's my dog tony that's tony boy dropping into that barrel i mean if you ever need it that's what i that's what i reach for tony boy he's doing that right now he's actually in his surfing bed right now just holding it down bro Mm-hmm. How about some music trivia? This is an old favorite. This is just a non sequitur. We're just dropping into this. You ready? I'm going to give you the fewest number of notes. Who's feeling bold? Go ahead and place your bid on how many notes you think it'll take you to name this tune. And trust me, you will be able to do it. The lowest bidder gets to gets the crack at it. So if someone says like they can do it in five notes, I want to see if someone's going to underbid and say, you know what? I can do it in four. I think I can do it in four, coach. And we shall see. We shall really see. Three. Well, okay. Well, we got a couple votes coming in three. Oh, yeah. Okay. That would be that would be kind of spicy. Okay. For John and Tim Taylor and everyone, hands on buzzers, but we're playing for pride here. Ready? I've dialed up my distortion, if that's your first clue. Ho, ho, ho. Ready? No, that's too much. That's too much. Oh, my gosh. Ready? <sighs> that's only three notes. One, two, three. Right. Two? I mean, God bless you. I don't really have the tone. So don't, you know, the guitar purists are going to be like, well, that doesn't sound, I mean... But this is what I used to play at bars and restaurants when I was the guy in the corner playing acoustic guitar. I'd be like, all right, yeah, table number five. Pay me 20 bucks and we'll, play, we'll do some trivia. Four notes. Kind of surfing safari vibes. When I get to the next part, everyone's going to know it. Ready? Ready? Ooh, that you got it. If you got it, you got it now. I'm waiting on the on the delay time here for the comments. I'm looking at it. I'm hoping things. I'm feeling things. Oh, I think I wasn't going live on vertical yet. It was the old go live thing. We're live. So for those just joining us on vertical, we've been horizontal for a while. Why we have to be up and down and all around, I don't know. We're doing musical trivia. So if you're ready for it, Who's got it? Blur song too. There we go. All right, Nick. Nicholas. You the man, man. You know what you have to do, right? You have to write it. Otherwise, I know you're singing it, but you have to be singing it with emojis and or words. You get one more chance here. All right, everybody. Places everybody right then. Yeah, we're going to play this right here. Yeah, all right, bollocks. Bollocks, governor. I got my head checked 
buy out your own jet. It wasn't easy, but nothing else. Sorry, try not to shout your ears out. My bad. God, what a riff. Somewhere we we should put it into our in our members area. We got this great section called songs we like, and there was a behind the scenes of that. And Blur was very much taking a piss, as the Brits say. Whereas like the record company was like, "Hey, we need a hit, yada yada yada." And they're like, "Uh, here's this demo of this song song that we did as a joke." And then everybody, including the band, I think once they saw the royalties coming in, realized that this is like, this was good. This is better than they intended. Sometimes when you goof and when you're just having a laugh, having a laugh, governor. My apologies to my British friends. I did, I put in my time. I lived over there in England for a couple of years and just enough to offend everyone I met there with my impersonation. So um, for my vertical enthusiasts, you're just joining us. My name's guitar friend, Tim. Uh, I run uh, guitar lessons online. It's a lot of fun. I, uh, back in the day, uh, behind on the screen here behind me is a shiny object. It's a platinum record for playing with Colby Calais on her first record. I play guitar with and for her. And then I was her, her band leader, music director on the road, which meant I was a guitar player and singer in the band, but also I would put together the set lists and figure out like how we would do like an acoustic version of the song, like stripped down for like radio performances at 8 a.m. in the morning, all those things that you hear, like sometimes you just got to wing it and figure out like how to dial it in for those situations. So we would, uh, go all over the world. Like that first record, we did a lot of stuff in Germany and England. Our first gig was in London. Um, and then we did a lot of stuff in the US as well, obviously. I went on to write a song with her and Jason Mraz called Lucky. That's that one that goes, you know, jumping from Blur to now this. Do you hear me? I'm talking to you Across the water Across the deep blue Ocean under the open sky Oh my, baby, I'm trying And then Colby sings and then so on and so forth Much jubilation ensues So that was my big hit song that I wrote And then I went on to make more and more music Just sort of writing and producing Making my own music under my name, Tim Fagan You can find my music under Tim Fagan Um, And yeah, I, I live in Nashville and I'm living the dream, making the guitar songs for y'all. Uh, today, we're talking about chord tones. We've got one more jam here to get into, and then we're going to find out who won our Dare to Share Challenge. So, if you've ever wondered, how do I play the right notes when the chords change? We're starting with that today on just classic one, four, five. And we've done the key of... C. We've done the key of G. And now, can anyone tell me what key we're in right here? Thanks, John. Appreciate that. It's especially <laughs> sultry here with the frog in my throat today. But. Exactly, Nick. Yeah, the acoustic stripped down versions became really fun to do because, as you know, they can be sort of more, more charming even. Okay, we are in the key of D. Love it. Love it, love it. It's good that your autocorrect goes towards love, though. There's some autocorrects that, because they only learn what you're putting into it, right? Sometimes. That's why I don't have autocorrect. My ty- typos are fully free range and organic. Key of D. 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 We've got an F sharp. Holy camoli, hold the phone. And a C sharp. Are you sure about this? Are you sure about that? All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So those are our scale degrees for the key of D major. We're starting to get the vibe here. I think we understand this. I've got more for you after this, by the way, that's gonna take this. If you're like, I get it, I get it. Okay, stick with me this one more go around. Then I've got a way to just take this across the whole fretboard that I think might delight you. Here's pentatonic notes the one two three we skip the four we get the five and the six let's do it up here on this classic pentatonic spot jam along noodle along with along with it if you already know where we're going go for it spell out the chord changes follow them triumphantly 
I think I switched up the colors this time, but that's okay. So those are the seventh degrees. Those are the C sharps. If we add those to our skeleton, that is the D major pentatonic. The D notes are these ones right here. So these are your roots. These are kind of your anchors. I'm gonna come right out and say, I think this is more important than caged. Being able to find the root note of whatever you're going for, whether it's a root note of a scale or a root note of a chord, that is your GPS. You drop that root note and then you can find the things that live around it. The faster you are with that, the more free you are to just be thrown into any situation, any chord, if it goes by for two beats or you hangs out for two minutes, you know how to find your, your thing that you're going for. Oh my gosh. G. Golly G willikers. Okay. And this chord progression is a nice, it's one of these ones that could trip you up because it's like same, same, different. I think you already know what I mean, where it's like one, four, one, five, one, four, five, one. All right. That's what it is. Here we go. So it goes D to one chord, G to the four chord, back to the D. Then the A, five chord. Second half, D, one chord. Is it the same? Not quite. Goes to the five there, then it comes back to the one. Very melodic kind of progression right here. One, four, one, five. Four. Now we got the five. And feel free on the chords to spell out a full chord or do a triad. And then sort of, and then land into some solo playing, some, some uh, single note playing. It's the blending of those two things smoothly that's going to give you that sense of freedom, right? So if you're like... making sense do we like it do we not like it are we convinced are we nonplussed whenever i get this voice i'm like dang i wish i could keep this without the being sick part oh boy oh boy okay some of you have seen this so don't spoil the answer i haven't made a new one of these so let me hold on you ready we're gonna do a round of if they made it, if they dated. So this is like celebrity, like what would happen if these two people got together and had a baby. Uh, let's see, is this gonna play on the, I don't know if it's gonna show on the vertical version. Let me see if I can add this real quick. Hang on, hang on. I need to add a media source and I'm gonna, and it's gonna be good. And it's not gonna be ridiculous and it's very important. Oh no, this is creepy close up. Okay. All right, this is this is getting this is getting out of hand here. Okay, ready? So this is gonna be a close up object, and you've got to figure out what it is before it gets revealed. Here we go. Creepy close up. It's the sick voice, you know, it's a sick voice, right? Creepy. All right. Keep it PG. It's a, it's a not creepy object, but when viewed up close, it is creepy. Ooh. It's not so creepy, I'm not it's just a, It's just an easy breezy okay. little, it's a ginger. Sorry for anyone watching on the, on the vertical version. I wasn't able to have the video play there, so you just got to see me reacting to it. But that's just some ginger. Just some good old household ginger. Uh, to your question, Siggy, uh, concentrating more on triad shapes, cage shapes, or the notes when I target chord tones. Um, it kind of becomes a mix of all of them. 
So really it would be focusing on one for the day, like one for a while. And today what I'm wanting us to look at is, is just the tone of the scale as its own thing, meaning like the lighting it up here with these yellow and these uh, green colors, really emphasizing this idea that there's a skeleton underneath. So the skeleton is that pentatonic. And let's imagine if I, if I just played pentatonic over this. It all works, right? And sometimes it like I'll hit some chord tones because there's two of the three chord tones for the for those chords for the four and the five. They're already in there. So now today I want to just be thinking, what if I went and brought in that extra note? I know that's that's what I keep saying, and you, I'm sure you get it by now. But the idea is that that's what I'm think. That's how I'm thinking today. So for today, I'm not so much worried about the triad shapes. On a different day, I might be working just purely on triad. So on that day, on on a Tuesday, I might be like. You know, just going in there and just trying to make sure I know where those triads are. What I like is the ability to have triads and scale tones start to mingle with each other so that it becomes one sort of blend, one smoothie of choices that you can, you can go for at will. You know what I think it's time for? I think it's, I think it's time for. I'm just going to put on a drum beat. It's time, folks. <laughs> to get into the dare to share, but never compare. We're gonna draw the winner now. Let's go, let's go, let's do it. To all my members who have shown up. And you know, you don't have to share, so there's many of you that have shown up and put in the work. I applaud all of you. But we do have a special tradition here, a brand new growing and thriving tradition in our community where every month there is a Dare to Share Challenge. And this month, the dare was to just pick a chord progression that you like and share it with us in a way where you're like, hey, this is what I love. And uh, these fine individuals in the month of February shared with the community a video of their own playing. The wheel is big and it's packed up and CageBot is still in there. Oh, if CageBot wins, we all die. Not good. We don't want that. So this will be, let me make sure the settings are set correctly so that it really takes its time to spin. Because sometimes it, when it's set to like, you know, to only go spin for a couple seconds, then it's like, whoa, whoa what was the point of that? Um, let's see, uh, blah, 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 blah. Sound and speech. This is one of those apps that changes where things are all the time. And it's constantly trying to get me to buy it. I'm not going to buy it. The free version's fine. Maybe it's over here. Or no, no, it's down here. It's down here in a different setting. Spin duration. Okay. Spin duration is 20 seconds. We love that. It's going to go for a while. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to spin the spin. This is the one that counts, everybody. <sighs> In fact, we gotta speed up the music because we need more intensity. Yeah. Okay. And we need to uh, we need to. Em
emphasize the um, the announcer voice. Check, check, check. One, two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Dare to share a challenge. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Folks, one and one only can be the winner of this Dare to Share. The winner's going to get a one-to-one -one lesson. 60 minutes with the man himself, guitar friend Tim will be this person's friend. More and more every day, we're diving deeper into these scales. We're diving deeper into the love. Here we go. We're daring. We're sharing. Congrats, Brett. So Brett recently landed a gig. A good lead guitar playing gig, right? Way to go, Brett. And now we're gonna we're gonna dive deep, Brett. So whatever I'm out of breath from the actual push-ups I actually did. That's great. I'm happy for Brett. I'm happy for everyone who dared and shared. Thanks for checking that out, for being awesome. Uh, and I believe in you. And we got a whole nother fresh month ahead of us right now so we're already into march there's going to be some more daring some more sharing that's a fun chord right there in case you haven't played that let me show you that this is a consolation prize for all so see the fingering there so you got this one right there right there that's the trickiest part is the fingering right so you're basically taking the three notes of what would be, in this case, like a, imagine like an A major. But we gotta switch up our fingering. So hold that triad, and now you gotta actually use your, use your pinky there, right? So, but that's all so that you can get that B underneath. So that's an A chord over a B, which creates that really beautiful sus 13 kind of jazz thing that's smooth, which is great. And then you can move that around. Okay, gang. I got one more thing to throw at you. And it's going to be for anyone that is like, all right, I get it. But what if we take it across the neck? And let's take this key of D, where we are. And let's dive into kind of the sort of like busting out of just one area, one position on the neck. And this was literally just something I was messing with before going live. So I don't know if it's, if it's fully cooked, as you might say, as, as far as an idea, but I want to see if we can explore this idea. So looking at where the roots are, and let's take like, um, you know, let's, let's take this D right here. And what I'm going to do is just sort of like spell 
where those octaves are, where the, where the classic, we'll, we'll get to it. I, I'll just sort of actually be quiet for a second, which is wild. So what am I doing here? I'm just, these are just D notes. If I put them in the right spot and let's check, check our math here. So we've got, there's a D, there's a D. Wrong spot. Yikes. Okay. So to the question that comes up a lot and like what Siggy was asking about is like, what am I thinking of as I'm playing this? Am I thinking chord tones or triads? And for, for me, for my approach, which is always, remember it's music. So anyone's approach to making it is as subjective and open to interpretation as music itself. But if you like the results that someone like me is getting or anyone who's teaching you, and they can articulate how they're thinking while they're doing it, dive in, enjoy it, and then make it your own, as I always say. So this, for me, has been working probably for a long time, which is that I kind of see the roots as like goalposts. And between those two roots, I have these, everything we're talking about today, I have the notes that are built into like the pentatonic or the major scale, and I, I tend to turn my attention towards just kind of one chunk at a time. So even though, even though in the background, I might be like, I might be able to pull up, let's say like, I don't know if I'm going to draw it correctly, but I might have tons of information that I, that I might be able to pull up if I need it. Like, so right here, I'm just, I'm drawing in like the additional notes of like the pentatonic scale for D in that area. But when I'm actually playing a phrase or a lick in this area, I might only be kind of concentrating on what's happening between those two D notes, those two roots. So what I'm highlighting in the hot pink there is kind of just like, that's kind of all I need for that little zone to, to play with, to be able to have like something that I can express with. So I'm sort of zeroed in on that area. And with what we're talking about today, what if I just add to that these notes that we've been playing with. So, uh-oh, that needs to be yellow. Yellow, yellow. Right, so we're getting a lot of colors going, but I hope you see that what I'm looking at right here, those two Ds and the notes between them. And then if I wanna... So literally, yes, it is just a D major scale, but rather than being like D major scale, I know a D major scale, let me show you that I know a D major scale. It's more like, Oh. So it's a really nice little kind of, if you were to think of an octave on a piano, there's a lot you can do in that octave or an octave in a singer's singing voice. Some singers, many that are iconic, especially like me today with my like sort of head cold voice, limited range. But if I was singing like la da 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 da, this is where the melody lives. And then I'm gonna sing something for you. Hey, yeah. Now that's the best music you've ever heard. That's my point today. What I'm really trying to say is like when someone is singing and playing something with intention and melodically, it, it that's when you start to hear people say, well, you know, it's it's the notes you don't play or it's like, you know, less is more. It's like, this is where you'll actually be able to hear it and feel it and and know that you can own it and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm hitting a chord tone. It sounds good. I'm putting some feeling into it. And that leaves you more room to focus on. Maybe I'll play with this tone or I'll play with this pickup. Because if you try to mess with the gear and the approach and the and the tuning and the playing and then too many notes, suddenly it all gets diluted and it's like, you're not sure if you said anything musically that you... Anyway, you get the idea. So that's like one area. And then I would want to keep taking that approach. Um, what I would like is to not make the fretboard look so crazy. So I'm actually going to like, let's imagine if we just, we erase that. So don't worry, it's there. It's in the ether still. But if we were to just keep taking that approach up the neck, there's that D bar chord right there. I, I like sort of taking it one octave at a time 
and seeing like, oh, I could do that, do that. And boom, it's like, or you might prefer to like slide up here. But you see how that's just like a, it's a tasty little nugget and you've got one octave and within that octave, you can build out all of the, all the, the scale degrees that give you the flexibility to be able to be like, all right, I'll just throw that right there. That seven, I could put that one right there behind it. Do you dig it? Do you feel, do you smell what I'm cooking? Uh, and which notice this is a four, so it could be up there. So let's try that. Um, and so on and so forth. So I would like y'all to let me know, especially my members who I will be seeing uh, in our daily workouts, our guitar workouts of the day, which if you're interested in what we're doing here at all, literally just like this, but with less blabbing, it's still fun. Less of Tony surfing. We save that for the weekends, but we just do 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes at most of us uh, jamming out. And what do I have here? I think this is like, there's nothing in there. Normally I have like a slide or something, but um, yeah, but basically you get a 14 day free trial. If you go to guitarfriendtim.com, you can get the information there and uh, you can, no matter what, even if you get like a discount code, because I sometimes offer discounts, you start with your first two weeks free to try everything out. Uh, and that's the beauty of it. And if you're still not convinced, if you want to try out some more of my teaching, I have a five day free course. The link has been showing up in the chat. It's also in the description. That's the five day skills challenge. Um, totally free. You get one email a day. It sends you to a page that has a, a video and MP3s and uh, PDF and all, all the stuff. And it takes you through like kind of exactly what we're doing. Like, but like the real rudimentary blocks of like finding the root notes on the fifth and the sixth string and the first string. Uh, soloing with a major and minor pentatonic, triads, modes, groove. A lot of times we, we neglect the right hand stuff. Um, what are y'all doing this weekend? Are you doing anything musically related? You going to see any music? Are you playing any music yourself? Are you recording? Are you uh, listening to music in your home in the comfort of your abode? What's going on musically in your world at the moment? Anything on the horizon you're excited about seeing? Like, is there a gig that you have a concert you're gonna go see where you're like, oh, we're almost there. Sometimes the fun of the show is just the anticipation of like, all right, I got these tickets like six months ago. It's finally coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, John. Yeah, I'm, what I'm hoping is that we start to take the same approach to, to knowing the cowboy chords cold, like just boom, 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 to being able to just sort of grab like these roots in different parts of the neck on different strings to be like okay i'm good and if you have that it, you build out your your island of knowledge once you get there so if i have the root and then i can get into my bb style playing and then i add to that on some other day i'm like oh i can make it minor that's great even if that's just like what you got like you can build a lot out of that right nice John, that's the only way to play S SRV, if you're asking me, is like till the fingers are, till you get the super glue out and you got to glue them back on like he did. Yeah. For a long time, I was playing my, my strats um, with 12s, with heavy gauge strings on them, tuning down a half step or sometimes a whole step. Um, and boy, oh boy, I love it. I kind of miss it. But because I'm doing a lot of the teaching now, being you know tuned down into different tunings is kind of confusing. So I've got them set up with regular regular gauge strings but it took a while to get used to just playing you know regular tens COVID in the house oh COVID in the house don't give it to the chickens don't get it from the chickens i hope you're okay tim taylor heal up plenty to practice glad to hear that way glad to hear that chow 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 boom ba 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 playing that guitar every day i love it john oh john we're glad to have you 
We have we have a lot of Johns. We have a lot of Michaels. We have a lot of Tims. A lot of fellow Tims in the community. Uh, so the water's fine. Come on up and join us. Um, congrats again to Brett. Way to go, Brett. Good work. Good solid effort out there, Brett. Um, that's about it from me. Over this jammity jam and jam track, let's let's play a little bit more. Oh, it goes to back down to that slow tempo. I liked it a little bit peppier there. Let's let's turn it back up to like 80. Yeah, a little bit faster there. The Borg, cyborg, roboto guitarist. Okay, let's jam it out here. Do whatever you love and you like and you feel over the G. Forget about the dots. Forget about your problems. And let's just sort of riff out. Here we go. Thanks so much, friends. Yeah, let's go for it, right? 170. Here's one little party trick I'll leave you with. I put this on, it's a, my Instagram post of the day. I think it's on YouTube also. Scale on a string. So we're in G, which means we've got the open G string. Just do hammer-ons. Just find that scale on a string. Open. Yabba-dabba do it and do it and do it and do it. I don't know if I'm going to do this right here. Try that, right? There's that seven. Ha <laughs> ha 